course, AFRICOM has been very, very successful since its inception. It has done a lot of great work uh, building capacity of our, our African partners. And the African partners have changed over the years in a, in a positive way. We have also supported the efforts of our ambassadors throughout the region and have advanced U.S. interests. Part of your mission is to establish military relationships. How do they come into play when you're dealing with insurgent threats like what's in Somalia? You can look at uh, all the, uh, the effectiveness uh, that have been uh, increased in the uh, African partners. So the uh, troop contributing countries in Amazon, which we support the Department of State as they prepare those forces. They have had uh, some significant success against Al-Shabaab, and those troop contributing countries have, uh, have performed well. As I understand it, the idea was to help the African militaries establish themselves so that they could take care of crises on the African continent without our help. Right, and it's just it's about being a professional force in a democracy. Many of our uh, African partners have increased their uh, abilities as militaries, but also, and probably more importantly, to serve their governments and their people. That's changed significantly. We have, you know, numerous examples of that. So AFRICOM has helped to develop democracy on the continent? Every, every time our militaries go out there, whether it be uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guardsmen, they bring a professionalism to them, they bring values, and uh, that example uh, has a major impact on our, our African partners, plus all the training that we do. So you could look at any of the situations from Ebola to the challenges in Boko Haram, and you can see people who have, been, uh, who have benefited from a U.S. training and uh, capacity building efforts working very effectively. AFRICOM has garnered a lot of attention with its reaction to the Ebola crisis. How do emerging health issues impact your strategy? The country of Liberia uh, had that problem down there with the Ebola breakout. It basically shook them to their roots. Their confidence was gone. We went down in support of the USA to support that effort. We actually succeeded beyond most expectations, and not we, but really the Liberian leadership, Liberian people. And then, of course, a, a small but very, very professional armed force of Liberia, which has been built over the last uh, 10, 15 years. And their uh, motto uh, since their inception has been, has been building a force for good. So that Liberian army was uh, working with us side by side, showed a tremendous amount of confidence and competency, and helped to inspire the people, as well as provided a huge connection between the medical authorities who were working to, to support the people of Liberia. So I assumed you learned a lot from the Ebola crisis. Give me an idea. Uh, one of the biggest things that made a difference, quite frankly, was the Liberian leadership who reached out to the people and said, this is the best way to take care of yourself and your families. And that was one of the biggest things that uh, was a takeaway. And that didn't take any money. That, that took uh, leadership. But to get to that, they had to get some confidence and uh, some ability to understand that they could you know, beat this disease back and, and save their people and, and help themselves. We, of course, provided communications and coordination efforts. So bringing all the people and all the players together and communicating with them, we were able to do that very effectively. We brought uh, engineering uh, expertise out to help them uh, build. And the other thing that's huge is logistics. It's a country that has a underdeveloped infrastructure and to get out to the places where the disease was uh, ravaging the people was, you know, a, a challenge. So that ability to uh, move and ability to logistically support things uh, helped out tremendously. And then we did, as, as we always do, we train people. We trained over 1,500 healthcare workers who are out there today, you know, making a difference for Liberia and the people. But we took the strengths of the military and, of course, the biggest one was speed was to be able to get there quickly and uh, get out to the places that needed to help or get the Liberian uh, medical people, the international medical people out to where they needed to help the people. So there were a lot of good lessons from that. As always, when you, uh, you do something like that, you, get a, you uh, have a learning curve, but uh, the military is a pretty doggone good learning organization, so we, we learn fast. For you personally, what has been the biggest learning curve? To understand the people, to understand how they, uh, uh, what their values are and understand the situation is probably the biggest learning curve. It's huge, it's diverse, you know, it's got over a thousand languages, multi-ethnic backgrounds, and, uh, you know, to understand those things is, uh, is the biggest learning curve. Other flashpoints we have on the continent are Boko Haram, ISIS. How is AFRICOM involved 
in fighting these violent insurgents. In the Boko Haram piece, the, uh, the three countries that are working outside of uh, Nigeria to, uh, to help contain the threat of Boko Haram, the forces that are doing the work in Cameroon are, uh, for, are the Rapid Intervention Brigade, and that's, we've had a long-standing relationship with them. The Cameroonian military that is uh, taking the fight to Boko Haram is the, from the Special Anti-Terrorism Group, another long-term relationship we've had that uh, they've built their capacity. The Nigerians, the, uh, the colonel who's leading, went back to one of our war colleges for training, and uh, he's leading the effort. So, uh, so it's a combination of those things. Are we doing enough? That's a, a great question. Um, you know, the trans-regional threats and the complex terrorist networks and the criminal networks, you know, that, that requires a whole host of things. Uh, and then, of course, you need a... Uh, willing uh, and able leadership in the country to make a difference uh, that's all a part of it. You know, the trans-regional criminal and terrorist network continues to grow. We've supported the Africans in successes in that in some areas. In uh, other areas, uh, you know, the Africans have not been as successful, s such as uh, Libya. There are reports recently that seem to indicate that AFRICOM has become more willing to engage in combat operations. All that is really, you know, based on the situations out there and what's needed. The, uh, the way we work with all the African nations out there is it's really a demand-based uh, operation. So what they need is what the things that we help them with. And that's what, uh, what's most important for how we fit in and what we uh, do uh, in our role as uh, a military. So how does this reflect your recent posture statement to reduce risk for U.S. personnel and our facilities? On the reducing risk in personnel and uh, facilities uh, throughout the African continent, as you know, because of the vast continent, you're uh, really concerned about the distances. So what we have done in, in, in support of mainly the State Department, who has the primary responsibility to protect the uh, embassies and the personnel abroad, we have uh, developed uh, cooperative security locations, uh, which we can then uh, move to based on indications and warning. Uh, so that we can get close enough uh, and much closer than we've had in the past to be able to support them as the situation uh, is uh, requires. So are these staging areas like pre-position sites? A uh, cooperative security location is just a, uh, a, small, uh, a small location where we could come in. It's got a couple warehouses. We have um, contractors that are prepared to come and uh, help us out. And then when the, uh, when the requirement is to get down to move closer to one of these trouble areas, then we move in, uh, put up a bunch of tents, and, uh, and prepare to support the embassy. So it's a, it's a, it would be what you would call a very austere location with a couple of warehouses that has things like tents, water, and, and, uh, and things like that. I'm curious, does the security for these installations fall under the contractors also? Security for those are, are really done by the host nation. The security of the individual site itself, uh, where they are, is, that's not a problem. Well, that implies a lot of trust. That's a great point because, uh, you know, the, the places where we go and the teams that we work with, the people who secure us are our partners.